Okay, thank you everyone for being being still. Um, I'd like to call the November 13, 2018 committee whole meeting to order. It's approximately 8.05 p.m. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilwoman Fairclaw. Here. Councilman Burgess. Here. Councilman Roth. Here. Councilman Maldonado. Councilwoman Bailey. Here. Vice Mayor Shelley. Here. Mayor Porter. Here. Any additions, deletions, deferrals, Mr. Manager? Okay, before um, we move, well, let's do the um, uh, approval of the minutes. Is there a motion on the, is there a second? second. All in favor? Aye. Motion carries, and if we don't mind, if no one minds, I'd like to move this gentleman up on tab five, uh, requ re request for waiver of fees, uh, staff report. Mayor Habad of Homestead and Cutwa Bay is hosting their annual public menorah lighting and kindle the light on the menorah event. This free event is a community-wide candle lighting ceremony open to all, regardless of background or race. Habad of Homestead and Cutwa Bay is a nonprofit organization. Uh, they're uh, requesting the mayor and council authorize the city manager to approve a waiver of usage fees for a total amount of $200 for the use of Losner Park on Tuesday, December 4th, at 5.30 p.m. Questions from council? What's that? I, I'm, I'm, I'm saying we, we, we've been doing it in the past, it's split up amongst all the council members. That way you don't have to pay the fees, it'll be paid from the dais. We'll, each one of our uh, uh, associates will pool together the resource to pay the 200 for you. Okay. Okay, so we'll take this off the agenda, and you'll up. cover it. And we'll, and uh, our assistants. I I O U I O U is that what? Yeah, you it'll be it checks in the mail. <laughs> okay. Okay, so thank you. Sir. Sorry we made you wait so long, but you know, <laughs> luck of the draw. Um, going back to the agenda, tab two, Mr. Manager. Sure. Two. Staff recommends the Mayor Council approve the award of ITB number 201825 tree trimming and line clearing services to Asplund Tree Expert Company in an amount not to exceed $135,120. The bid is a one-year contract with four one-year renewals if mutually agreed upon by both parties. This uh, service is required year-round by the electric utility to ensure vegetation does not interfere with the city's electrical circuits and infrastructure, which can disrupt power if not properly cleared and maintained. How many years have we used them? Forever? Manny, we've been doing this forever, right? Yeah. Never mind. It's okay. <laughs> we've been doing it forever. <laughs> Um, any questions from council? Mr. Roth? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Obviously, this has been around a long time, but do they, do they have an inspection thing or do we wait for people to call us or they have specific routes they follow to clear lines? Um, it seems like that outside the city area, we have more problems with overgrowth of lines being taken over than we do inside the city. So does anybody know if they have a specific route they work? Are they doing... Uh, inspections of the lines, or do we just wait for somebody to call us and say, hey, the vegetation's taken over? It's a little bit of both. Manny, do you want to talk a little bit about the process of how you prioritize the tree trimming? Uh, mm, normally, what we, what we have, you know, at uh, uh, every day, uh, the company pick it up, you know, what we can like, walk order. Um, uh, we do a, a, priorities, a prioritization when, you know, somebody calls us, when uh, we got a complaint, you know, that uh, the tree is, is, uh, is, is in, mm, do a lot of obstruction on our uh, distribution line. Okay, well, I'm not sure if I understood what he just tried to explain to me, but is there a, is there a, a specific work schedule or uh, pattern that they go through the city and they inspect the lines to see if they need to be cleared or not? Or do we wait for people to call us and complain about those? Well, we, we, pa we patrol the line mm -hmm. uh, at least uh, one in a week. And, uh, and we got complaining for uh, customers. 
So, so it's a combination of both. It's Basically, a combination they have a work of schedule. issues. They do their own inspections, but right. they also take on complaints as well. Right. Okay, so well, ASPLAN does their own inspections, so we don't have someone from the city that's giving them specific work orders on a daily basis where I'm misunderstanding that this is not that type of a contract. This is not a maintenance contract. This is an as at will contract when they see something wrong, they go fix it. Or do we have a do we have a contract that is specifically designed to maintain our lines so that in the event of a storm, you know, the trees aren't blowing into the lines and knocking power lines down and things like that. So what I'm looking at is something preventative versus something that is a customer calling and complaining about the lines being overtaken by vegetation. Councilman, to answer your question, um, they have uh, defined routes which they follow on on a monthly basis. Now, if special orders come in, uh, area of concern, then work orders are issued and they'll go out and take care of that issue. But Jerry, the question is that only with this contract or is this contract? additional to what we do no this is the contract that this does is that. for all of it yes, this is yes. for the city uh, uh, scheduled maintenance by inspecting and 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 doing what they normally do plus complaints that are generated by the sure. public correct yes sir yeah. and it's not within the city i mean this is the entire homestead public service uh, correct the 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 entire electrical service area so it's only $135,000 a year, and our lines are totally clear of debris and line of, of vegetation. And we have no inhabitation. Totally clear. I'd be careful with that. I uh, that's think what that's I'm a asking. Big jump from totally clear. I think it's they do things as as best as they can do. Correct. They have their zones. Like it, we're going to be in zone A, then zone B, zone C. But obviously, those zones are spread out over a 12-month period. Now, if a resident calls in and says, hey, you know, there's a bougainvillea growing up and there's kids playing near the lines, they'll issue a work order and they'll go out and take care and of that Theoretically, issue. you could have your backyard aligned back there and there's trees that are way too close to the line. They don't know about it. The neighbor, you know, the resident doesn't say anything about it. So snapshot in time, I don't think it's always, everything is always totally clear. It's kind of uh, a kind of um, a priority type basis. But there's more work, I would say, out there than $135,000. Sure, no, and I get that. And uh, the reason I'm asking that question is because I've gotten calls from residents and the situations have been taken care of after I've made a phone call, but they were told that they were to keep their power lines clear. And I think that that's a safety issue. And if somebody is responding to a, cu a, a customer that's calling uh, one of the departments that it's their responsibility to keep their lines clear from debris. That's wrong. Yeah, there is a discussion. No, there is a distinction though between where the line is and where the tree is, and there is a criteria. So we certainly, um, you know, can't it really assume. depends on the circumstance. So, for example, if the tree is on the interior property and it's nowhere near the the property line, it's not on city property, it's not on the right of way, but it's encroaching on the line, then it's likely the homeowner would be expected to take care of that. Yeah, and if they do go out there, like, like the manager's saying, if, if the, the limbs are encroaching on the power, they're just gonna cut that back. They're not gonna go remove that tree that's on private property or anything like that. No, no, I get that. I wouldn't ask anybody to do that. And I'm, I'm assuming a lot of our lines run either through uh, right away, they split backyards and things like that too. So I just wanted to to know for sure that that this is not something that just they go around and they take care of all of our lines. It's an at, at will and as is and as needed type of a service versus uh, we're going to maintain all your power lines throughout the city. So that's all I was caring about. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Any other questions? Uh, tab two. It's a public hearing. I'll open up for public comment at this time. You're welcome to come. Seeing none, close the public hearing. Is there a motion? Is there a second? Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Tab three, Mr. Manager. Staff recommends Mayor Council approve the attached resolution authorizing city manager to enter an agreement with Burns and McDonald for engineering services associated with the county zoning approval and permitting process for the future electrical substation <laughs> located location for an amount of one hundred thirty nine thousand eight hundred fifty four uh, dollars. This is for the uh, the substation Southwest two ninety six Street, uh, which uh, we've had we've had in our capital project. Questions from Council. 
Any questions from the public? Any comments from the public? Seeing none, close the public portion. Uh, sorry? Is there a second? second. Moving and second. All in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Tab four. Mayor, this is the, um, we had had a, a meeting, I guess several months ago, with a consultant that was hired to discuss what to do with the stadium. And there was some discussion with the board about the council about uh, potentially demolishing the sta stadium. And so we went out for a bid and we told you that we would come back to you with the bid and uh, you said you had wanted to have an additional discussion before this item um, is approved. So wanted to get some uh, feedback in terms of whether to move forward with the demolition and uh, bring the uh, contractor, uh, the Redland Company Inc. in the amount of $594,800 or if, uh, if there's some other direction. So basically what we're asking is if you'd like to uh, move forward this item to the, uh, to the next meeting for approval uh, or do something else. Mr. Burgess. Thank you. Uh, I guess Mr. Maytan, will this, does this bid, and there's two or three steel buildings or metal buildings, whatever they are, that sit just to the, probably towards center field, left field of the, of the stadium that are in total disrepair. Will this eliminate those hazards also? Councilman Burgess, no, not this, not this bid. No, uh, we're, we're working with the risk manager on those issues. Uh, the one we were uh, this bid for is for the um, stadium itself. So that w that's not part of the bid. Th that's correct, sir. Okay, and things like electric windows, the generators, and things like that will all be removed prior to. The the police generator has been taken out already. Um, the we more or less uh, everything that the police got out of there is out of there. Uh, there may be a few things that they have stored, but they are going to move them. Um, but more or less everything that you see there is going to be uh, done by the bid, removed. Air conditioning units that are still suitable and usable. Um, the, the problem with the AC units, because I also oversee facility maintenance, we now kind of got rid of most of our facilities because everybody's here now. So we don't have different facilities like we used to because majority of the uh, offices are here. So we really don't have a use for them units because they're not really compatible with the facilities that we have. Okay. So what I see on the on the left field side going towards the soccer fields, it looks like there's still a generator sitting there. That's not a generator. That's just a, sh a shell box. The uh, generator that was that the police department was on the east side at the end. You just see the cage. They okay. took the generator so it's just, out. It's, it's an empty, it's just a shell. empty shell. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. Yes, sir. Mr. Vice Mayor? Yeah, on the same line of questioning, though, so even though we don't need necessarily that air conditioning units, we have no use for it. I mean, is there no salvage value for that, or is that something that Redland's going to take and salvage and then offset what they're now charging us? Uh, just to let you know, the bids that came back were a lot higher. So I think that when you usually do a demolition, most companies, they look at what they can make on the salvage parts so they can do it for a cheaper price. Because you know sometimes that's the way it is. I know they'll be Redland Construction will be using the sub to working with them, uh, Vice Mayor. Okay, but I mean, is that something that was in our bid itself, or is that something that'll be worked out at the end, where we know kind of what they plan to salvage versus what we could salvage it for? Or, or? just to let you know, we, when we did the bid, we we did it as is, everything that was there. All right, and the same thing like with the lights. The lights are are they salvageable? They're. Th those lights are outdated, uh, Vice okay. Mayor. I mean, everything now, just like we are at our sports complexes now, all our facilities, we're going with the new LEDs, which right. is less electricity and repairs. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Mr. Roth. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm okay with all this. Uh, what will the end product look like? Will it be sodded? Will it be just grounded down to the dirt? Will it be, will, what will the appearance of it be once it's been removed? Councilman Roth, what they'll do is they'll demolition it. They'll dig a, a couple feet down, put rock, and it'll be a uh, bay of grass. You'll gain 6.91 acres once the stadium is removed. Okay, so it'll, it'll be a finished product, and we just have to maintain the grass at that point. Y yes, sir. Good. Thank you. That's all, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you Welcome, um, do you do you pull up the parking lot to the to the west side, or you leave that there? Leaving the parking lots there, sir, because just in case if we gain some events, we get we still have the parking. 
Did you budget this for this year? Is this in the budget? Um, no. no, I did. I, you want to talk about? No, sir, because at the time we didn't know what we were going to be doing with it. So what we have planned that is, if you move this tonight, at the next meeting you'll have a budget amendment for first reading. The other option is to do nothing, and it, it sits there and no access. You're still going to incur money to just watch it deteriorate, correct? The, the uh, things that I'm going to occur is more land, landscaping, mowing the grass. That's the only thing I'm really going to occur. Right now, you know, I still have the alarms. <laughs> and, you know, they're still having costs that we're putting into the building now. And, of course, you read the memo. If we did keep it, it'd be $1.5 to change the whole roof, which I we mean, can't find no one. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I, don't, I don't suggest we invest any money in the facility at all because, you know, unfortunately, you know, the police were there for a little while and it served a purpose, but if you go inside there now, it's, it's, it's incredibly bad shape yeah. in a very, very quick amount of time. And, yeah. um, you know, so, so unfortunately, we are where we are. Yes, sir. But, um, and I think we do need the green space. I think it would be, it would be a, you know, an advantage to have, if nothing else, just the green space and, and do a better job with the other green space that we have out there. Um, I guess I guess the question is, do we do we need to do it now, or, or do we just sit there? I understand the other problem that it would be is you know people getting in, the vandalism, all the kind of you know other elements that it could you know take a life of its own after six or eight months. So um, it's just a shame. It's just a shame. You know, it's, it it had such potential, but it was like 25 years ago. So um, anyway, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions from council, Vice Mayor? Yeah, just to, just to circle back. I mean, I, I have some uncomfortableness with not knowing the salvage value of some of this stuff. I mean, to me, it is. And again, I'm not saying that we should salvage it. I'm not saying that you know maybe the price takes that into account. But I just think that between now and the time we get to the council meeting for a final vote on this, I would like to see if you guys could at least do some sort of an analysis of that. And maybe that's why that price, the, the current Redley construction price is so much cheaper than say some of the other ones because they anticipate that salvage and that's fine. But I just don't want to be asked questions later to say, well, wait a minute, that those lights were worth X or those air conditioning is worth Y. And you know, why didn't you guys try to salvage all that you could? So I just I have, have some you have an inventory? Do you have an inventory of the items? Um, I can get an inventory of the items, the ACs. The problem was the ACs that one, we're going to have to take the pay a company to take all the ACs out to also uh, re recycle all the freon and all the freon out of them and then have to cap them because once air gets in them lines they're done so the problem is is that we always look at when we do demolitions we always look at it they're gonna get money out of whatever salvage they get and to us it looked like it was a better deal when you saw the other bids at a million dollars so it kind of looks like it was a better price for us. Right. And we just really don't have, Vice Mayor, the facilities to, to use them units. Or I would right. took them and put them in stock. But Yeah, I'm not saying we should salvage, but I think I, think I need more information to just to be able to be comfortable to say the reason we're not salvaging is because of this. Because it's not, you know, just like what you're saying now, I'd like to have something there, though, that does that analysis for me. Or, you know, is there not companies that would salvage these for us and therefore pay us, you know, they want the ACs. They're not going to demolish it, but they'll pay us, you know, X dollars for it. And the answer may be no, but, but I just have a little uncomfortable just not knowing all that information, especially given that we did invest some dollars into the facility. So there may be some things that are newer versus older versus if those were all original parts, I don't think we'd have, have this conversation. But I think because there was some upgrades made to it for its functionality, if we're not doing everything we can to salvage that, or if it's not reflected in this pricing, which I think it might be, um, I just need something there that gives me some comfort. We'll, we'll put together a memo and email it to you all before, so all before need, the yeah. vote. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other comments or questions from the council? This is a public, there's a public uh, hearing at this particular point. Anyone who would like to speak, you're welcome to come forward at this time. Tab four, close a public hearing. Any final comments? Is there a motion on tab four? Is there a second? Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Tab six, Mr. Manager. Staff recommends Mayor and Council approve the attached resolution authorizing the city manager to destroy and dispose 
of the attached listed property consisting of firearms seized by the city of Homestead Police Department. Um, and then there's uh, a list attached. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Any questions from council? Surplus property? Any comments from the public? Fire sale for surplus property, police department. Was a public hearing portion. Is there a motion? Is there a second? second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Tab seven. Staff recommends mayor and council approve the attached resolution authorizing the city manager to purchase multi band radios for the Homestead Police Department from Motorola Solutions, Inc., for a total of $471,870.80. It's part of city capital improvement plan, CIP number 952. Questions from council? Chief, how long has it been since you had new radios? These are all hand, mostly handhelds, right? Yeah, they are at the end of life, and uh, we never had the, the dual purpose radio. Before. Okay. So that's, gotcha. that's the difference. Dual purpose, okay. Yeah, Mayor, this was part of the concern that we had that uh, they couldn't communicate with outside agencies. So, in mass casualty events, to have different law enforcement agencies to be able to communicate with each other. Unfortunately, too many communities have learned the hard way that these radios really need to be able to have conversations with the other law enforcement agencies. So initially we were gonna phase this in, but in light of the fact that there's been so many incidences over the last couple of years, we thought better to get them now and uh, so that we don't risk losing life uh, in the event that they can't talk to each other. Perfect, okay. Is there a second? This is a public hearing. You're welcome to come and speak at this time. <coughs> Seeing none, close the public hearing. All in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Tab eight. Staff recommends Mayor Council approve the grant award from the Department of Justice Cops Office for an award of $89,075. Department has been awarded a grant from the Department of Justice Cops Stop Violence School Violence, School Violence Prevention Program in order to provide enhanced training to local law enforcement officers. This training includes the purchase of a simulator, $72,208.18, which places officers in various situations where they must provide an immediate response, such as an active shooter scenario. The grant also provides funding for training in crisis intervention response, overtime funding in order to ensure adequate police coverage during the training sessions, funding for the community policing unit to attend classes for certification and crime prevention through environmental design, which allows the officers to assess businesses, schools, and community centers. This grant has a match in the amount of $29,692, which is met through the PD staff training, logistics, and staff supervision. Questions from council? Any comments from the public? Close the public, Ms. Fairclaw? <laughs> I was trying to, just wanted to close that. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Um, this is, I was happy to see this, any support that we can provide to schools to help prevent um, violence, I think is a definite plus for our community considering this is something I've been very passionate and vocal about. And reading the, um, the financial clearance memorandum, I was trying to get an understanding of what this funding would entail. I know the bulk of the budget is going towards technology and training so can you just talk a little bit about specifically what that training is for and how it is aligned to the new requirements of the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas Act and violence prevention in schools? Good evening, Mayor and Council. The grant, the COPS grant was specifically for one of the areas was for training in technology. Mm -hmm. And the in order to fulfill that grant requirement, we looked at uh, buying a simulator so that we could put officers in an actual scenario where they may have to respond to a school and obviously respond in a positive manner. So this training will enable them to do that. There's also crisis intervention training so that when officers are on the street and they encounter someone that may be mentally challenged or be in, in a crisis mode, they will be able to uh, diffuse that situation. The um, community design, environmental design, that's so they can go to the schools and look at all the access points that someone may utilize to create a, a, a negative situation. 
and they can advise the school as to how they can rectify those situations. That was all fit in the perimeter of this particular grant. So that's, that was the areas that were chosen. Um, I like the fact that they're getting trained on how to respond to incidents that may occur in schools. I was just a little confused if the grant is for the prevention of violence. It appears as if the training is to react or respond to violence. So that was a little confusing to me, but it was an applicable use because it was approved um, for what you had intended. My next question is, I read in the memorandum that they would be trained on like active shooter situations. What other um, simulated trainings will they undergo? Because if it's aligned to the schools, there is more than active shooter situations. There are hostage situations and bomb threat situations. So will they be a trained on that also so that they can respond to any of the drills that we have to practice in schools? This, the simulator will allow them to uh, on multiple uh, scenarios. Okay. And, and with the crisis intervention training, that will enable them for hostage negotiations and all of that. I, I believe when when the COPS office wrote this proposal, mm -hmm. uh, this application, they did talk about preventing school violence, but I think it was the magnitude of the school violence. So in other words, if an officer can respond in a timely manner and, and and perform at a at a higher rate than what what they may be currently trained to do, then you you also have involved prevention by eliminating the number of fatalities or injuries. Okay. From everything that I read, that that was my understanding of this application. Okay. Yeah, I was a little confused. I was like, this is not prevention; it's reacting. Um, and then my final question is: Is there a list of like applicable um, approved expenses for this type of grant because I was trying to determine what were some of the other options that could have been utilized for this particular grant outside of the technology and training. I, I can give them to you right now. Okay. Um, they were one coordination with local law enforcement officers, in other words from other municipalities to work on, on coordinating a response where we may have to go to other municipalities and bring them into the city. Mm -hmm. Um, placement and use of medical metal detectors, locks, lighting, and other deterrent measures. Uh, acquisition and installation of technology for notification of local law enforcement. In other words, a more of a 911 response where the school would have a specific uh, number code to go directly to the police department. And basically any other measure that was determined appropriate by the director of the cops office. So that was the parameters in which we had to write our application. Okay, and my final question is, now that you have received um, this funding to eventually support schools, how is this or how has this been communicated to the public, private, and charter schools within the city? It has not, We're not until we have council approval. Um, but is there a plan? Excuse me? Is there a plan to communicate that? Not not at this time, I'm, I'm, to my knowledge. I'm sure the command staff is working on that. But first, our first, um, our first responsibility is to get obtain council approval in order to move forward. And tonight, hopefully, you know, we'll be the first reading and we'll get approval and then we can start the ball rolling. So my question to staff, is there a plan to communicate it um, to the education entities in the city? Yeah, uh, it's, it's always a plan. We always have something in, in place of what we're going to do uh, to cover our cities within the city limits of Homestead. Mm -hmm. We always, you know, go out once we get something like this, and we we try to get with the people, you know, principals, uh, or somebody that's in charge to let them know what what our plan is going to be to assist them with any problem they they may have. So yes, we we have a plan. We just hadn't we just hadn't. Uh, put it in place yet, but we do have a plan. We're still working on something right now. So can I make a recommendation? Um, the Education Committee works directly with the South Region Office, as well as the charter schools and private schools in the community. So perhaps we can partner 
sure. to communicate this to the region because when going out to the schools, we can't go directly to principals. We have to communicate with the region. So perhaps if approved tonight, we can work together and at our education committee meeting, we can communicate this to the school Bad district idea. and let them know we've been awarded it Absolutely. and then filter it out to the other charter and private schools. No doubt about it. That's, that's okay. a good plan. Appreciate okay. that. Appreciate okay. it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Anything else from council? We, we just, what we do, we can talk about it. Have the public, is there, is there a motion on uh, tab? Eight. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Tab nine. Yep. Mr. Mayor, can we have a quick motion to extend the meeting? We've hit 830. Uh, 15 minutes. Extension. 15. We'll cut it. We'll, we'll go out of here before then. Is there, an, is there a motion to extend at least 15 minutes? Is there a second? All in favor? Motion carries. Tab nine. Staff recommends mayor and council approve the award of the city clerk's vault modification to Gallardo Construction for a total cost of $29,700. State Division of Library and Information Services Bureau of Archives and Record Management recommends that microfilm electronic media vaults be designed to protect records against fire for a four hour period. In order to meet those standards, a request for quotes to modify an existing storage room in the City Hall's office was released May 21st. Two firms submitted price proposals, the lowest of which was Gallardo. $29,700. Questions from council? Any comments from the public? Is there a motion? Is there a second? Moved and seconded. All in favor? Motion carries. Tab 10. Staff recommends mayor and council approve the attached resolution authorizing city manager to purchase one 2018 MADVAC model LS175 urban sweeper from Environmental Products of Florida for $115,486. Question from council? Do we have one now? We have one? This is a new item. We don't have one of these now. Don't touch it. Yeah. Mayor, we just have the two sweepers which do the main roads. This will be doing Washington Avenue and, and uh, also Chrome, and it'll also do our bus shelters, and also it's required didn't by we, the end. Didn't we have a real small one? They had they had some old ones uh, when I first took over, but those were already okay. out of service. Okay, thank you. Any other questions from council? Any comments from the public? Is there a motion? Moving and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Tab 11. Mayor, in light of the time constraints, did you want to defer this to another time? I, I see a it's couple of heads. It's Shane. not time sensitive. No, no. But it was asked for by your request, so but any, we can move it to another time. Any opposition to moving it to another night? Let's move okay. it to another night then. Oh, Joe and I are ready to go. <laughs> okay, it's you, up to we, you. I mean, we can do it now. Well, people aren't into it with their heart. <laughs> it's, it could get it could get wild. Yeah, let's let's move that one to another meeting. So, and then the the last one was. Uh, direction on the uh, alternates for planning and zoning board. Did you want to move that as well? You want to move that to the next meeting? Yes. Yes. Okay. That that does it then. Thank you very much, all of you. Hold on. Is there a motion to adjourn? <laughs> move in a second. All in favor? Aye. Motion carried.